The discus. Remarkable. In their mammalian characteristics to raise the offspring. The king of the aquarium, they're often called masters at captivating the viewers with not just their outer beauty, but also their complex behavior. Discus fry cannot digest solids or organic material or food like adult discus fish can when they're newborn. Therefore, they have evolved a unique trait, a trait that captivated my heart for nearly eight years. Mammalian parent raising where the fry feed off the parents' epidermal mucal milk. And this milk contains essential minerals, amino acids, hormones, immunoglobulins, and essential nutrients. The parents can often be seen communicating with a fry and they may display fascinating behavior to try and fend off or scare off the curious aquarist. So there are two ways to breed discus fish. There's hand raising, also known as artificial raising or parent raising. And in this video, I'll discuss some parent raising. So to obtain a proper breeding pair, natural selection between fish is best. You can either buy juveniles around eight to 10 centimeters, put them in community tank or adults in a community tank. Then along with proper territorial establishment, Breeding cones or surfaces are placed on either side of your tank for potential pairs to start pairing off at around 11 to 12 centimeters size already. You may see this potential breeding pair veer off to the sides of the tank and display some courtship, which means bowing to each other or shivering or chasing away any other intruders in their newly established breeding territory. Whenever you buy a confirmed breeding pair, pick your sources carefully and quarantine them and make sure that they're fertile. When you buy a breeding pair, ask for pictures of wrigglers or any proof that they are fertile. It's easily, hobbyists are easily fooled and being sold two females or a breeding pair where the eggs are eaten constantly or where the males just simply aren't interested in fertilizing. I prefer to use cube dimensions, around 100 liters or 150 liters. I don't normally use a tank higher than 50 centimeters. And a rectangular tank is not really recommended as the fry may wander off and never find the parents in their crucial attachment phase. The recommended TDS that I normally go for is around 60 to 90. I like to start with a TDS of 90 and then do a cold RO water change to drop the TDS to around 60. This tends to induce spawning or breeding behavior. When I keep the discus originally at 30 degrees, it drops to around 27 degrees Celsius, which stimulates the pair to release the hormone prolactin. I just simply allow the heater to raise its temperature again to 29 or 30. When I see that both of them are shivering and that they're going to lay eggs and fertilize, then I don't feed the pair at all. If you feed them, you can distract the male from fertilizing properly. If you find that your pairs argue or the one is not interested in fertilizing the eggs, Maybe try to introduce another breeding area. I believe that discus need to agree on the same spot to breed, otherwise they can fight or stay dormant. Once the eggs are laid, I don't do any water changes for three days until the wrigglers hatch. Remember to leave your moonlight on every single night. If you tend to have an egg-eating parent, it's normally one parent. It's rare that it's both parents unless they were spooked or scared by something. So if you have an egg-eating parent, find out who it is remove them or use a cone guard of wire, which may suffice until the regular hatching become free swimming. Remember, it's okay if you don't get it right on your first try. Sometimes it takes two to three batches of eggs for an inexperienced pair to get it right. You may also see the parents attempt to eat any white or unfertilized eggs. If you see any fungus mycelia forming on the eggs, add five to six drops of methylene blue to keep any fungus mycelia from forming on the new egg membranes. If everything goes well, you will see that the parents will continue to fan the eggs. If they stop fanning the eggs, it's a serious warning sign they may have abandoned the eggs and eat them. Three days after the eggs hatched, you will, the fry will become free swimming. And it is absolutely crucial that they find their parents within the first six hours of becoming free swimming. If you see the fry struggle to find the parents, Lower your water level to half height to improve chances of the fry finding the parents. Remember, fry have weak eyesight. They lack lutein in the eyes, resulting in very weak eyesight. And your spray painting job or the polystyrene sheets create contrast between the background and the parents. The parents may have more stress bars or they'll turn dark for the fry to find them. 
When the fry become free swimming, I tend not to feed the parents so that they are 100% focused on finding all the fry. Four days after attachment, I start feeding baby brine shrimp. During the brine shrimp phase, you may continue to do water changes twice a week of 25% to 50%, whatever your will keep your nitrates below 20 or 15 milligrams per liter. By the, by the point that the fry eat brine shrimp, you can raise your TDS to 100 for increased mineral and trace element content. Uh, the fry will slowly start developing the ability to osmoregulate and they may start taking in minerals. You may also daily siphon out any adult discus species to prevent the fry from picking on it. Okay, so I believe in pre-treatment or prophylactic treatment. But discus fry are especially susceptible to gill fluke and flagellate infestations as from two weeks of age. Reason being that the gill filaments develop and that any flagellate or gill flukes have the ability to invade the gills. This can occur at two weeks of age or four weeks of age. And sterizin or uh, potassium permanganate can be used to help prevent this from happening. I like to use this prophylactic treatment at two weeks of age, very light, half dose, which is one ppm. Then at four weeks of age, one ppm. And then around six weeks of age, again, at one ppm. The fry may be separated from the parents at four to six weeks of age. I like to copy the water parameters exactly of the parents, transfer the fry, and then acclimate the fry to a new ground tank when I do 25% water change. And then daily, I start phasing out the parent water with new water. I like to do water changes every single day for my juveniles for up to six weeks, anything from 25% to 50%. Once the fry reach small coin size, I introduce gentle frozen mixes of natural raw ingredients. There are many recipes available on the internet. I especially start feeding this when I see the fry start to lose interest and take less bites off the parents and they start venturing to the bottom or the sides to look for more food. Please. Don't introduce any commercial foods at all. The reason being that some commercial foods, fine powders, can have a high protein content, higher than 40%, which can damage the fry and they can die from organ failure. As the fry mature, you need to take the responsibility to cull any runs or deformities. Any smaller fry must be separated from the larger fry to give them a chance and not to compete for any food. Discus fry grow the best when they're all equal size. At six months of age, discus must be at least eight centimeters or bigger. Then they are sellable. At 10 months of age, discus must be around 12 to 13 centimeters minimum. The females can already start showing breeding behavior and even lay a few eggs around 10 months. And the males can fertilize as from 12 months. And for optimal growth of discus fry, your nitrates must always be kept below 15 milligrams per liter consistently. Also remember that any huge temperature fluctuations can result in swim bladder complications, so ensure proper temperature control. Yes, I forgot to mention that some people, I don't do this for biosecurity reasons, um, I want to introduce a possible pathogen to another pair, but what has worked for me before, what I know some people have done, They've actually taken a cup of water from one tank where they were breeding, where they were spawning within the first 24 hours after laying eggs. They take that water and then they pour it into a tank where the pair is dormant and it often results in the pair breeding. Like I say, this is a biohazard risk, so I tend not to do that, but I know of people that have done it with great success. So try that out if you can, if you want to. I wanted to point out some of the cube dimensions. I tend to use cubes, they work better. And some of my pairs can see each other, um, but in general, most people like to spray paint their tanks. Um, but my pairs can actually see each other, which is not really a problem for me. Um, but if you have a pair that keeps jolting or charging at another pair, then obviously it's a good idea to cover the tank with other polystyrene sheets or to spray paint the tank. See that breeding behavior right there? Some shivering going on, some real awesome stuff. Hey Flopper, some shivering also here, so a few runs being made.
these guys picked below the filter of all places and they're still arguing I guess it's because I took the cone out but um, yeah so sometimes they select the strangest of places to lay their eggs it can be anywhere really but there you go there you go nice you hungry? yeah are you hungry? yeah ooh 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 you see that? in conclusion I believe that every discus enthusiast should experience this amazing phenomenon of the Sanfus Adult. With responsibility, patience, hard work and a lot of love, the reward is earned at the end of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed. If there's anything I didn't mention in the topics you want, you know what to do. 